Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. What you are watching this evening are the season four epilogues. Our epilogues are short vignettes, little slices of the night that focus on the personal stories of our vampires. Our epilogues are always related to the plot of the season, but they also foreshadow what is to come. Tonight's epilogue is the last resort. Let's meet our vampires. Hi, I'm Erica Ishii, and I play Annabelle. Hi, I'm Talison Jaffe. I play Carver. We'll start our tale in just a moment, but first, I'd like to remind the family that we do not bring you L.A. by night on our own. We have help from very important members of our coterie. I'd like to thank Backblaze. Whether you are kindred or kind, Backblaze is there to help you with its backup service in the cloud that will restore your files should the Second Inquisition come knocking on the door of your haven. Please show them some love for supporting LA by Night for the third season in a row by visiting backblaze.com slash LA by Night. We would also like to thank Level Up Dice. Level Up makes art in the form of dice. And for the family, they make our official Vampire the Masquerade dice sets featuring all your favorite clans. If you'd like a set for your own home chronicle, please give them a visit at levelupdice.net. Formal traditions, archaic customs, polite lies, harsh realities, in other words, politics, the punishing demands of the undead existence and the exacting requirements of the masquerade have created a society of deceitful monsters. Whereas we can hope that mortal society is grounded in the hope of empathy and abundance, the society of the damned is grounded in fear, suspicion, and scarcity. Some kindred insist that it must be this way that deception, duplicity, betrayal are not aberrations, but rather qualities to be admired. Is this true? Must it be true? These are the questions that some kindred seek to answer as the central focus of their nights. With this very firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story. Thank you. 
there are parts of Los Angeles that are so far flung that at night you can actually see the stars. Out here in the perfect dark, a motorcycle speeds through the night. The lancing finger of its headlights illuminating the road until they pick out a certain street sign on a certain trail off the road. When you follow that road far enough, you come to what looks like a huge rock in front of a hill. Annabelle, you think you found the place where you're supposed to be. There's nothing here to tell you whether you are in the right spot or not, but at least it's as described. Go up, check the boulder. Scuff marks around the bottom. Scuff marks around the bottom, graffiti all over the face. Somebody's carved initials all over the right side. Seems like the right place to you. All right. I activate prowess and I roll the boulder side. Reach into the core of yourself and let the vitae do its work. You call upon the power of your blood, urging it to fuel your muscles to imbue your sinews and tendons with preternatural strength. Make a rouse check. I'm good. You're good. You are so good. You never thought you'd find yourself standing at the entrance to the Manson Caves, a place steeped in some of the darkest history humankind. You roll the boulder way with your vitae fueled arms and you see in the hill a scar almost like a thin mouth low to the ground. You'll have to get on your hands and knees. I got an all forest and I crawl down, inching my way in. Dark in here. It is um, perhaps not as dark as the void in the labyrinth that you have. But dark enough. The boulder behind you rolls back, <laughs> sealing the exit. And now you really are in pitch blackness can't see your hand in front of your face, nothing. You're in a tight, small, <laughs> narrow, rocky space. I can only go forward. There is no going back unless you want to try to move the boulder again. So you crawl forward, inching along, the ground, moving your muscles carefully to propel you onward. And suddenly the ground in front of you gives way and you feel yourself sliding, tumbling <laughs> down into darkness. The rock slide isn't long, but it is surprising. <laughs> and you come to an abrupt halt at the bottom. A moment later, you spot a light. Dim at first, but as Carver turns up the light on his electric camping lantern, you can see that you are in fact in a cave that has been painted over white, like the inside of a snowball. 
Carver's equipment, his gear, weaponry, stacked neatly to one side. I remember my first time sliding down that. It's a shock. It's appropriate descent. I was human at the time. A friend brought me down here and uh, got drunk, got high. I think I found my name somewhere down here a while ago. Wait. <laughs> Ruffle through some of the dirt. Yeah. <laughs> sure I love enough. it down here. There it is. Carved in the rock for the world to see. If the world could steal itself to come down here. This is a good hideout. Every time there's an earthquake, it changes just a little bit. There are ways in that you can't get into anymore. New ways out. It's dangerous. Your name's actually Carver. It's what I was calling myself then, at least. Who were you? Does it matter? Yeah. Because we're not that anymore. I was naive. I was young, or I didn't think I was young. I was an idiot who wanted something more, and I got it. This matters. This is important. I didn't have any of that, not like you. I wasn't interested in anything besides myself. Are you now? I've redefined myself. So no. But sometimes the world has to change for us. X asked me why I can't walk away from everything, from the cause. And I stumbled out something that I can't, I just can't, I can't. I feel like the Annabelle even a year ago would have had such an easy answer. Because we can do better. Because we are better than this. And I believe that. But now I'm not, I'm not sure. If even the best of us can just lose it. Then we're all the same. It doesn't matter if we plot and scheme for power or if we just grab for it because we can't help what's inside. You seem to have all the answers. You seem... You're the real deal. You get shit done. They can't. I do. I get shit done. And I have answers. Not all of them. I don't even know what questions to ask. <laughs> well... What changed in a year? Me. I'm tired. I'm so tired. Every night I go out 
I go out hoping to change the world. And it just changes you. <laughs> when faced with a situation beyond our control, powers greater than ourselves, the uh, forces that cannot be beaten, inevitable truths, I tend to find that we have one of two reactions. Suicide, either quick or slow, or homicide. <laughs> the world kills you, or you find the things that are getting in your way of what you need, and you take care of them. And I'm not talking about your friends. I'm not talking about the good people who are just too weak. Because it's not their fault. Everybody's weak. I'm talking about the things that break them. In a perfect world, your friends wouldn't have to prove that they're unbreakable. They could just be themselves. But it's not a perfect world. And there are things that will break them. And you can either give up or fight. Both are fine. One's more useful. How do I fight? <laughs> How? Well, I've been fighting my whole life. <laughs> fighting is about being smart. Fighting is about doing that thing that you know would help, but that you just can't because the rules are in place. Rules that I might add were put there by the people who are really, really hoping that you don't break them. The things that say at the end of the day, all the pieces go back into the, their proper place. The board gets cleared for the game tomorrow. I say, break the fucking board. I say, burn it down. You find something, you find power that is affecting you. You don't take that power, you burn it. There's no good way to use it. There's no good way to be a part of it. You burn it to the fucking ground. You protect people by burning the monsters to the fucking ground. Because they're just going to infect everybody. They'll infect you too. You're no better than them. And you know that. Then what gives me the right to decide? Nothing gives you the right to decide. There's no right. You either do or you don't. Who's gonna fucking judge any of us other than those of us who've decided to judge the rest me. of us? Me, me, I judge me. Do you? Yeah. So what is it that you think? What is it that you want now? After all of this? What's it worth? I thought I knew. To me, I haven't killed anybody yet. <laughs> not directly, not struck a final blow knowing full well that's what was going to happen. And it's not because I'm a pacifist or anything. It's just, I know once I start down that road, it's a slippery, dark slope. That is true. And it's inevitable. And it does change you. So... The question I would put forward to you is when that day comes, and it will come, do you want it to be with intent and purpose, or do you want it to be an accident with chaos and madness and blame? Do you fall into the pit or do you jump? I 
guess I'll have to be in that pit when I get to it. Yeah, you don't have to decide tonight, so. I know you're gonna go eventually back to them. That's good. They're gonna need you, but you need to be smart about it. You need to not trust anyone. I can't live like that. I can't live like you. <laughs> How can you live like this just on your own with nobody? Oh, no, 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 I have people. I just, always be ready. Have something. Find ways of making sure that if things go the way that they inevitably will, that you're protected. And it's not even that you can't trust anybody else. It's the feeling of nobody trusting you. You don't have to live like that. Everybody trusts you. It's one of your powers. You are very predictable. And I want to earn that trust. But and I, just be predictable. It's the easiest way to get trust. Well, it seems like you've made a very good career of being unpredictable. I have. An extremely good career of being unpredictable. I get shit done. But that may not be the path for you. You may be the predictable one until the moment when you need not to be. And that's when it's gonna fucking matter. Is can you be just for one moment? Can you be the monster the world needs for just one moment and find yourself again? That's the part that scares me. Because what happens afterwards? That's always the question. Can you ever get that piece of your soul back? <laughs> First part, no. But everything else is negotiable. People live with worse all the time. And it's much easier to live with the worst if you know, you're keeping others from finding out if they have to. That's why it's called sacrifice. What do you sacrifice for? What do you live like this for then? Why? Why do you care so much? Why can't you just live on your own like this and let the system go fuck over everybody else? Because I chose homicide. I said, fuck them. I said, fuck this. Fuck all of it. Freedom. I want to see everybody be who they need to be. I want to be what I was destined to be. And I can't do that under somebody else's thumb. I'll take my licks. I'll take what I have earned, be it good or bad, but I'm not answering to these fucks. There's no way to live. So yeah, I signed up a long time ago and there's no getting out anymore. You signed up? I did. You chose this? So did you. I, I did not. <laughs> then you would have given up because it would have eventually gotten too hard and not been worth it. But I didn't think that. I thought that maybe you had staying power. Annabelle, whatever he's got in that cup, he keeps drinking out of smells. Delicious in a rough and rank kind of way. There's it's a, already cooled. There is a bottle over here if you want. You would not believe how many rednecks there are in Los Angeles, especially out here. Just the worst. I don't think it particularly want to drink whatever you're having. I put the bottle in front of her. Yeah. When was it ever about what we want? <laughs> I 
The bottle is half full of congealing human blood. It smells like it should. Worst things happen in these caves. I haven't eaten since the fight. There was a fight. There was, there's always a fight. <laughs> wow. Fuck. I'm leaving town soon. Very soon. Where? Uh, Indiana. It's going to take a while to get there. Moving only at night. Stops on the way. Running into a contact in Gary. There is going to be a fight. But they'll be talking along the way. Meeting up with people. I don't think your business here is done. But if you need a break, don't mind being some muscle, maybe learning a few things, not being a shit about it. <sighs> Have you ever left this state before? Have you ever gotten out? I'm not from here. <laughs> really, you seem like you're from L.A. <laughs> <sighs> it adopted me does that but no other than yeah, well, LA's really the only place that I've been to especially like this now yeah alright well Probably not going to like it. Probably going to do some stuff that you don't agree with. You'll learn a lot. You're going to meet some people. And probably going to fight. I'm not going to kill anyone. I'm not going to try to. They're going to try and kill you. Can you defend yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. I can't promise I won't be a shit about it. <sighs> it's not quite rancid on the tongue, but it's getting there. You can smell the hatred, the bigotry, the self-righteous indignation. There's a angry resonance in the blood. All right. An educational outing. Yeah, just for a little bit. Take a break. <laughs> Learn to miss the city again. Did anybody... ever really trust you and you them? I don't know. Come on. Did anybody really trust me? Yes. They're idiots. Did I ever trust anybody else? Yeah. I'm also an idiot. We're gonna be in some fights. I'm gonna need you to fight. When things get serious, yeah. you do not fucking question. I won't push you to kill, but there will be some situations where those around you are doing some stuff. Things will be happening. Stuff. Things. 
I don't know, but it's going to get rough. What you do in there will be up to you. And I will try and get you out of whatever we get into, no guarantees. I'm gonna do some shit you don't like. I will try not to fuck you over. Your friends can promise not to fuck you over and then lie, and I will not do that. Bars. But I will make it clear what the fuck you're getting into. Are so low for you. If you only knew. <laughs> Fine. Fine. I reserve the right to back out at any time. You're on your own. If you want to leave, you can leave happily. Uh, get you in the first car back home. If you do. I work better alone anyway. <laughs> That's evident. If you do do something that I disagree with, I can promise I won't try and stop you. It will be the last thing you ever see. but you will die very righteously. <sighs> Annabelle, checking the time, you know that if you leave in the next 10 minutes or so, you've got just enough time to get back to your haven before you have to begin to worry. If you don't, you're stuck out here for the day. When are you leaving? <sighs> Tomorrow night. Actually, I don't think I'm going back to LA anymore, so I don't need this. So I'm gonna make the scars disappear. Just ah, okay. Quick uh, heal. Please, um, please make a rouse check. Go ahead and roll one hunger die. Success. The scars on your face inflicted by the broken glass and uh, the altercation in the bar at the deep where we met Delilah, the Thin Bloods, begin to knit and mend and smooth away, disappearing I into to your sure flesh. Keep up appearances. Oh, yeah. I wanted the whole city to know that Delilah fucked me up pretty hard. Yeah, we're gut out. Good. You know, she doesn't need that grief yet. It's my favorite superpower is when everybody knows you're the villain. It'll get you far. May not be yours. Speaking of villains, Princess Scourge Aurora was there that night. <laughs> is that who that was? Yeah. Shit. I promised her that I'd deliver you. Are you going to? I haven't decided yet. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> well done. <laughs> it's pretty fucking ballsy. Good move. A good teacher. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to deal with that, aren't we? Eventually. Well done. Well done. Okay. Do you need anything before we go? No. Right answer. What am I missing? That's a question that I should be asking. I don't even know what I'm don't what I don't know. But I guess when you've been at this as long as you have that it's kind of like teaching someone how to breathe. <laughs> Which we don't. No. It's just just always we're thinking about what you're missing. 
well. You're holding everybody up to your own standard. That's a mistake. Most people are callow, weak-willed. I'm sure they think that they've, they're have they good, but when really tested, most break. That's not true. That is very true. Uh, uh, just because you don't think that that describes you doesn't mean that that doesn't describe everybody else. That's stupid. No. How's that working out for you? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when you think about it, just a simple lowering of expectations mostly means that people will hmm, impress you until they don't. Maybe you just hold everybody to your standard. Oh, I do. <laughs> My standard, to be fair, is very low. Pretty low bar. Yeah. Who would want me ruling over them? <laughs> Is that what you want? No. I want to find everybody like me who's ruling over us right now. And get rid of them. I know what they're like. I know what I'm like. I have none of that. Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> Annabelle, you have about five minutes before you'll have to spend the day here. You here? I like it in here. I'd recommend uh, taking a tour if you've got some time. It's quite a lot. probably misplace some explosives at some point if you find anything. <laughs> Ever since I closed it off, we've been burying stuff here. I'll stay the day here. We can get started at sundown. We'll head out. As far as you want to go. I think I need to be pretty far right now. Go off and figure out just how strong you can fucking get. Cheers. This seems <laughs> like a very appropriate somewhat frightening place to end our vampire story for now. <laughs>